Greetings everyone. Welcome to another thrilling video on Swiss travel. In today's episode, we'll delve into valuable Swiss travel tips and beyond. If you're a first-time visitor, don't forget to click on the subscribe button and ring that bell icon for instant updates on travel and much more. Keep in mind that you are about to explore one of the world's most expensive countries. Everything comes with a hefty price tag and yes, you read it correctly. No matter how many budgeting tips you apply, the cost is higher than you might anticipate, surpassing that of most other countries. Take this into account when planning your itinerary for Switzerland. Despite its small size, Switzerland has its own currency, the Swiss franc, distinct from the euro. While a few places may accept euros, the conversion rate is generally unfavorable. Switzerland is predominantly a cashless society, with approximately 99% of transactions being cash-free. There's no necessity to carry physical cash, instead, opt for prepaid cards or credit cards. However, be cautious with credit cards, as they may incur conversion fees, typically ranging from 1% to 3%. It's worth noting that American Express Amex, cards are not universally accepted. Before utilizing your credit card, check with your service provider to avoid any unexpected fees on your statement. Personally, I find wise prepaid cards advantageous due to their low conversion rates. Additionally, Switzerland widely embraces contactless payments. You can seamlessly link your card to Apple Pay or Google Pay, allowing you to make transactions with a simple tap and go at most establishments. While Switzerland is not a member of the EU, it is part of the Schengen area. The Schengen visa you obtain for visiting any EU country also grants you access to Switzerland. The maximum allowable stay is 90 days. It is crucial to avoid overstaying to prevent potential visa complications. Overstaying could lead to being barred from entering any of the Schengen countries in the future. Ensure your passport has a minimum validity of at least 6 months. If you hold a US passport, you are exempt from visa requirements, and there are no stipulated limitations on the duration of your stay. However, it's advisable to check the immigration website regularly, as laws and regulations can change at any time. Essential apps for your Swiss journey include the SBB app, an all-in-one travel companion catering to your transportation needs throughout Switzerland. Additionally, the Mateo app provides a dependable weather forecast. Note that weather updates displayed on mobiles may not be reliable, so it's recommended to trust the Mateo app for accurate information. You may also want to explore the Mateo Swiss website for comprehensive weather-related information. Swiss weather can be unpredictable, adding a touch of excitement to your visit. The price of enjoying one of the most beautiful countries comes with this variability. It's wise to have a backup plan for indoor activities such as museums, churches, or other indoor attractions to ensure you have alternatives in case of inclement weather. When is the mm. ideal time to visit Switzerland, you ask? Well, jokingly, one might say better not, but on a serious note, the best time is during summer season, Switzerland experiences the longest days specifically in June around the time of the summer solstice. During this period, which is late spring to early summer, the country receives the most daylight hours. Days are longer, and nights are shorter, providing more daylight for outdoor activities and exploration. Consider planning your visit during seasons other than winter, unless you have a particular interest in experiencing Christmas markets or engaging in winter adventures. Each month unfolds a unique flavor of Swiss beauty, so you're free to plan your visit any day of the year. While I may not necessarily endorse city passes, they can be worthwhile only if you plan to stay in a particular city for two or three days. Considering that you're likely exploring multiple cities in Switzerland, it's worth checking individual city websites for available passes. One advantage of exploring these city pass websites is that they provide insights that can help you craft a well-informed itinerary. The power socket in Switzerland, Type J, differs from the commonly used EU power socket in many other countries, as it supplies power immediately upon connection without the need for a switch. The good news is that most universal adapters seamlessly work in Switzerland. 
I've personally used one in over 10 countries without encountering any issues. In my Swiss transportation video, I highlighted that staying in tourist hotspots can be expensive. Consider finding accommodation in lesser known towns or villages within a one hour travel radius. You can check the description for the link to my public transportation video. In that video, I recommended a half price ticket suitable for extended stays and multiple entries. If your plan involves a single visit, there are other budget friendly half price ticket options you can explore during your travel. This video also includes an overview of basic Swiss etiquette. For more details, check the video description. While transportation in Switzerland can be quite costly, there are ways to optimize your expenses. Consider streamlining your itinerary to focus on a specific area or invest in a saver day pass if your travel within Switzerland is unavoidable. For those exploring multiple European countries, acquiring a Europass can be a practical option, eliminating the need to purchase individual tickets for each country. You may find appealing deals on Europasses based on the countries you plan to visit and the duration of your stay. For a seamless experience with public transportation, punctuality is key, as Swiss trains are renowned for their efficiency. City or day passes may not cover certain routes such as cogwheel routes, cable cars, and some attractions, as these are often operated by private companies. Before visiting a particular attraction or taking a ride, it's advisable to check the company's website to confirm whether your pass grants you free access. Many attractions provide webcam services, offering a live stream from the actual site. Utilize the Mateo app and webcam views to assess the weather conditions accurately. When planning your visit, avoid relying solely on YouTube videos. Conduct your own research, as most attractions have their dedicated websites. Verify opening hours, entry fees, and other essential information beforehand to prevent any surprises upon arrival. Dining out in Switzerland can be quite pricey, and it's important to note that tipping is not a widespread practice. While a few places may have a designated bowl for tips, it's not the norm. To cut costs, consider booking accommodations with a kitchen. This allows you to easily pick up essentials from stores like Migros, Coop, Lidl, Aldi or Denner. I prefer Denner, Aldi, and Lidl as they are more budget-friendly compared to Migros and Co-op. Having accommodation with a kitchen allows you to easily prepare quick meals like noodles, requiring minimal cooking time and costing around 5 Swiss francs. In contrast, dining out costs around 30 Swiss francs. I understand you may not want to cook during your vacation. Instead, consider opting for takeaway food options from Migros, Coop, Lidl, Aldi, or Dinner. While I'm not suggesting you completely bypass Swiss local restaurants, these tips are a bit more budget-friendly. Be aware that these shops may close early on weekdays and have limited hours on Sundays, so check their schedules to avoid surprises. For budget-friendly options, explore the numerous kebab shops available. These provide convenient on-the-go meals or dining-in choices. Personally, I find this option particularly suitable for lunch. Also, you may consider options like McDonald's, Burger King, and KFC, which are generally more budget-friendly compared to Swiss local restaurants. Mm -hmm. 
Simply carry an insulated water bottle, that's more than sufficient, no need to purchase water. Switzerland boasts some of the cleanest drinking water globally, and in most locations, tap water is potable. Just double check to be certain. Personally, I've been using tap water for both cooking and drinking in Switzerland. Keep an eye out for signs indicating non-potable water in certain areas. Ensure your data roaming covers Switzerland. While a few attractions provide free Wi-Fi, it's advisable to have a minimal data plan as a backup. Depending on the duration of your stay or data usage, consider purchasing a local SIM card to alleviate any concerns about data access. For online food orders, you can explore platforms like FoodNow and just dasheat.ch. Public restrooms are not universally free in Switzerland, some charge while others do not. Payment methods vary, with some accepting cards and others not. Additionally, in certain places, euro may be accepted, while in others, it might not be. Keep one Swiss franc or two Swiss francs on hand to avoid inconvenience during urgent restroom needs. Embark on a land of adventures in Switzerland, offering a plethora of activities from hiking, paragliding, skydiving, and rafting to skiing, canyoning, bungee jumping, slingshot rides, gliders, flyers, mountain carts, trot bikes, and canyon swings. However, note that weather conditions play a crucial role in these activities. Prior to making any payment, check the weather forecast and terms and conditions. Many air-based activities like paragliding, skydiving, bungee jumping, and canyon swings require pre-booking and payment confirmation. When booking also consider the attire requirements. Switzerland, renowned for its adventurous spirit and stringent safety standards, offers a plethora of thrilling activities with well-trained coaches. I personally experienced the exhilaration of paragliding in Switzerland, an unforgettable adventure costing 180 Swiss francs. Check the provided link in the description for more details. Exercise caution when opting for hiking, as many trails are secluded, lacking network coverage, and the trail signs may be tricky. You are responsible for your safety. Essential accessories include sturdy footwear, a reliable jacket, and an umbrella, which I always carry as a backup regardless of weather conditions. Even if you have the perfect jacket, enhance your protection by wearing thermal layers, especially as innerwear, and don't forget to equip yourself with good quality hand gloves when exploring the peaks of the Alps. Recommended destinations to explore include one city among Bern, Basel, Geneva, Zurich, or Lucerne. Explore two stunning Swiss lakes, Eskenen Sea and Blasi, in a single day. These are among the most beautiful lakes in Switzerland, one Alps peak, and a sightseeing train ride from five scenic routes such as the Bernina Express, Glacier Express, Golden Pass Express, Gothard Panorama Express.
Express and Luzern. Interlaken Express is one of the top five panoramic train routes in Switzerland which is not much endorsed and underrated. The good things your saver day pass covers this train fare, no need to take specific ticket for this unlike the other four expresses. Optimize your use of the saver day pass to its fullest potential. Explore the scenic cogwheel train journey to Rigi Kolm, an iconic peak, without the need for an additional ticket. The saver day pass covers the cost of this cogwheel train, ensuring a seamless and cost-effective experience. Avoid junk routes which is highly priced you need minimum two days to cover everything, the travel time is more. It is mostly marketed as top of Europe to lure you to visit that destination. Rather you can consider visiting Zermatt Matterhorn, Titlis or Pilatus. I will be providing a more in-depth video covering the itinerary for Interlaken. Intriguingly, Titlis has been a favored location for filming numerous Indian and Tamil movies, including their captivating songs. Let's delve into the crucial aspect of budgeting for a four-day trip to Switzerland as a tourist. This budget estimation is based on one person for four days and includes round-trip airfare and visa charges for an Indian traveler. The approximate cost for such a trip would be around 2 lakhs 50,000, factoring in tickets and visa expenses. It's important to note that this figure is for budgetary purposes only, and actual costs may vary depending on factors such as the places you visit, the accommodation you choose, and your dietary preferences. For other countries, the information on screen is self-explanatory. Here's a useful tip, midweek flights, particularly on Wednesdays, tend to be more budget-friendly. Switzerland boasts three airports, Zurich, Geneva, and Basel, the latter serving as a common airport for France, Germany, and Switzerland. When booking tickets, consider exploring alternative options such as flying into Zurich if Geneva is expensive and vice versa for your entry and exit points. This approach can help you create a more budget-friendly itinerary. Finally, it's advisable to set aside some extra money beyond your budget to account for any unforeseen expenses. Regarding safety concerns, rest assured that you are visiting one of the safest countries in the world. I trust you have a fantastic and unforgettable experience in Switzerland. I trust that I've provided all the essential tips to ensure your visit to Switzerland as a tourist is truly memorable. Wishing you an unforgettable Swiss trip! If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more valuable insights. Looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Keep exploring!